Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Frame Fatales. We yeah. are nearing the end of our week. We've had a long, happy week together, but we're not done yet. We have so many more amazing runs, starting with Xandra Vandra here. Hi, Xandra. <gasps> Hello. Hi, Liz. What's up? Nothing much. I just woke up from a nap, so I'm a little out of it. Uh, nice. <laughs> but you're, you're, am, you're in for a treat. I am very ready to watch some Oni. Perfect, perfect. I'm I'm so excited to finally finally show this game off because it's it's a lot. Turns out, so uh, Oni Oni, the only game from Bungie North that they ever made. Uh, it's fun. We just as a okay as a preface. Okay, so we're playing a very high quality game in whatever this resolution is. Uh, awesome, cool, yeah. And uh, we will be playing on a hard difficulty because why not? You know, uh, just that's that's the difficulty everyone runs it at. Ah, might as well, might as well go with the hardest one. Uh, it also plays into RNG really on. So we have subtitles on because you know voices are hard to hear. And uh, I am playing inverted, but way back in two thousand one, inverted meant the other way. So I, I'm not actually setting invert mouse on, even though it is by today's standard. So I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go. Yeah, so, go ahead, uh, is it all right? Can I count down the timer? Is that all right? Yep. Is that how things? Perfect. All right. So, <clears throat> here we go. In three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. Shinatama's our little sister robot. So, this is the. Uh, this is a tutorial. Here's a, a, a quick thing about this game. Oh, by the way, I'm going to shake the screen. Please be ready for that. Shake, 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 shake. Okay, cool. Uh, basically, for this tutorial, I am waiting on uh, the, the, the text at the bottom of the screen. It's going to give me orders. I need to follow them. And it's waiting for stuff like, okay, how far has the camera traveled? Okay, good. Next task. And in the meantime, like... Shinitama is just going to help us out and tell us what to do next. This is basically like Kanoko is a, uh, she, she's working in the TCTF, the Technology Crimes Task Force. And uh, she still hasn't been cleared for active duty. So this is the last step before she goes to work. You know, it's got to do some basic movement exercises. Liz, have you played this game at all? Have you seen it? I have never played nor seen this game. That's awesome. Uh, essentially, a bunch of folks in uh, at Bungie North saw Ghost in the Shell, says, you know, that's cool. We should make a game that's that. And they did. And that's I, it. I wish I had that power to watch an <laughs> anime and then just make a game that's just that yep. anime without yep. like being sued, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Oh, oh, oh okay, so here is one of the major bits of RNG in the game, the, the the Karen G. We have Karen. She's gonna show off. However, we're in hard mode. These are hard mode robots. So Karen is either gonna win or she's gonna die. Whichever one it is, she needs to do it fast because we're waiting on her. So you see the flashes change the colors. Like basically Karen stop. Okay, she should be, oh wow. Okay, she should she should have this. There we go. The thing about that is, Karen can die. And if she dies, Shinatama will freak out and get very upset. So if it looks like she's about to die, just look away. And what Shinatama doesn't see can't actually hurt her. So she'll just skip ahead to the dialogue. The, the quickest way to get through this part is for Karen to die very quickly and for you not to see it. Thankfully, Karen did it, so she she's all good now. I love in speedrunning when we just do the most horrible and hope for the most horrible things. Yeah, I just want this person to die. Yeah, no, exactly. So uh, this, uh, I picked this run uh, from uh, basically a, a single, a, a like a multiple segment run that NMS put on YouTube like nearly ten years ago. 
And uh, basically, not looking at Karen when she dies is the one contribution I have made to this run. <laughs> That's the one thing I found out. Oh, if you look away when the bad thing happens, it's not so bad. It saves you time. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. She's fine. She just went to the farm. She's just sleeping. Yeah. The combat farm. And the combat farm. <laughs> He was willing to punch, kick, punch, punch. This is a beat em up, by the way. This game is a beat em up. There's like so much to this game. You like, depending on which, uh, if you're running, if you're uh, walking, there's like, there's combos. Like this, this game has a lot of depth. It's kind of cool. It's kind of sad. There's only one of these. But I, I just I just love it so much. Also, if you look to the ground, you could just put your head entirely through that door. Right, now we get to beat up a robot. So you're going to see me use this specific move a lot. Also, if you crouch and punch, you use like a, a double punch. That is one of the uh, strongest attacks you can do from a standstill. The strongest is what I just did. This, the backbreaker, is very hard to do. You need to catch someone from behind before they can turn around. Sometimes they'll just turn around for funsies. So it's actually very hard to do. Now you're ready to learn about the most dangerous kind of attack. Hi, what's up? Hey. When you're ready, proceed to the next combat. Just so, uh, with a robot. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to beat up this robot. Well, throw this robot. And basically, I'm looking at the text at the bottom of the screen, that is the true gatekeeper. That's waiting, like, okay, do the thing at the bottom, and then we will let you, we will let you do the thing. And then when we're done, the door opens. So I think uh, that should be it. Yep, there we go. What's, what, what you looking at? Yeah, that's really Always pretty cool. Nice to your robots, friend. Yeah, ow, hey. <laughs> I was joining you and looking at the. <sighs> that is a pretty nice ceiling, though. Gotta say. So this is just to show you. Hey, by the way, if you don't move or if you move backwards, you're block. Uh, we will not be doing that ever. There's no reason to ever block in this game. The best offense is a good backbreaker and throwing much. robots across the room. Yep. Okay, also, by the way, this game has, uh, this game is also a shooting game. This, this game has everything. Right? Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sh wait until she gives me more ammo, because that's just, this is why I need to expend all my ammo on this side. There we go. And then, also, this is a neat little room that shows you, by the way, there's recoil in this game. Go. Nope. Grab. Honey, grab this. There we go. And we're done. I just, I just, I just destroyed them. I just did that. Thank you. I, no, I did that already. It's, we're good. Thank you. There we go. You actually get scored for this. I don't know if it actually makes any difference, but it's just fun. Commander Griffin is our boss. He's kind of a jerk. There's actually a lot of lore to this game, and we'll find out all about it as soon as we go to work. By the way, uh, this game handles collision weird. It makes stuff invisible instead of moving the camera closer to you. We will get to use this later. Okay, this is the diary also. It's kind of a partial pause. We will get to use that later for some cool stuff. All right, and we're done. All right, now time for Kanoko's first day on the job. This is the first time she's ever going out on the field. All systems nominal. She's doing fine. This is a mistake. You aren't really in a position to criticize. The Syndicate is using the warehouse to shuttle contraband. Chung went underground to gather evidence. He failed to report in this morning. Find him and get me what I need to shut the place down. 
or shut it down yourself. I'm on it. Update. Dared in latency holding at 27.1. Bioplasmic waveform stable. So basically, uh, Shinatama's role in this, she's basically making sure... Oh, by the way, uh, Kanoko's super powered. She doesn't know it. Almost no one knows it. But Shinatama's there secretly to make sure that she doesn't get out of hand. That's why she keeps reporting to Griffin. Listen, Kanoko. You weren't in any danger. Also, I can't move. I need to... I need more tutorials, please. Okay, we're good. Run begins. So, welcome to Activating Terminals, the game. This is what this run is going to be for pretty much the whole the whole time. We will be trying to punch buttons and punching people who want to stop us from punching buttons. We avoided fighting that, that, that guy because it just takes a while and it's faster to just do this. It's incredibly rude. Like, punching buttons is very important. And who are they to tell us we should? Right? Also, I do apologize if there's a sound delay. Uh, sometimes the game does this. It hasn't done this in a while, but figures it would do this for a marathon. Oh no, yeah. okay. There is a, a mild delay with just the way that the run is set up, uh, but there is no alternative. It's either there's a mild delay or you don't get to watch this awesome video game. Okay, well, fair enough. All right, Chung, we're supposed to meet up with Chung. Don't worry, though. He's fine. Chung. Oh, I'm sorry. He's dead. It's Chung. I found him. Dead. So he thankfully left us a little note that says, Oh, if you find this, I'm dead. Whoops, I messed up. Anyway, goodbye. So we're just going to zip on out. Oh, wait. Yeah, by the way, uh, Chung was... Okay, Chung's an undercover operative. Syndicate, the big bad folks, uh, are doing something wild here. He was uh, monitoring them. Uh, he got got. But thankfully, he let us some information. But basically... Uh, Kanoko is going to run around and try to find out where is this bad stuff that they're smuggling? What's going on? Boop! Whoa. And I'm going to try to hit these buttons as fast as possible. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. So, there's precious little combat that's necessary in this game. You really just need to uh, like activate terminals and try to make sure that people don't stop you. This is like the very like Kinoko just wants to work. Just let Kinoko work. I just need to open up these doors. Ow! What a jerk. Uh, the enemy who just said, hey, will activate a uh, an alarm that triggers a cutscene sometimes. I don't know why he does it, when he does it, but hopefully he doesn't. Alright. Now we're going to wait for this guy to open this door. All right, we got to stop an armored truck. This also teaches you, hey, by the way, sometimes uh, people, you need to save people to open up doors. This is used this time in the game and never again. Oh, no. Oh, the guy at the top of the stairs noticed me. That's bad. Usually we don't want him to notice me. But thankfully we survived, so we're all good. Now we just need to, uh, you guessed it, activate a terminal to finish the level. So there's a truck. It's going to escape. We need to stop the truck from escaping. What do we do? No. Okay. Please just press the button. Thank you. Uh, the button for activating terminals is the same button as taunting. Sometimes Kinoko will just talk smack to some computers, even though you really want her to just be pressing the buttons. And there we go. I found a data pad. It's an encrypted shipping. Kanako is just like so eager to work. It's like it's her first day on the job. She's like, yes, okay, yes. Check it out. It's I found it. We can just well done, we can just go bust the other place. Back. I'll have you picked up. Musashi is owned by BGI. According to your latest report, BGI is a suspected syndicate front. If we can prove the connection, we can move against them. I can go in and I just love how incredibly stubborn Kanoko can be, though, in this game. And also like how this game kind of uses the whole, like, stupid thing you don't know about with Shinatama to 
to kind of like, you know, spur the action on. Because basically Griffin's saying, all right, fine, fine. We don't want Kanoko to get out of hand. We'll just let her rush to the scene of this other place. Also, by the way, this is my favorite part of the run right here. It's time for everyone's favorite buddy, Agent Thorson. Hi, Agent Thorson. Ah, oh, there we go. Isn't he the best? Gosh, Agent Thorson, always there to say his name and then get interrupted and die 30 seconds later. But that's okay. He's the best. We love him. And his twin brother, who also works there. Bye, Agent Thorson. <laughs> yep. I'm sure I can get someone to help you. Also, yeah, I, I am sorry. The only thing I can skip in this game are the loading screens, and they're really good. They look awesome, but unfortunately, I have to skip them. Also, by the way, meet boss and mid boss. We'll be fighting them later. Count on it. When I get through with them, there. Just make sure I'm not interrupted. Are you telling me that this Kratos-looking guy with like weird veins on his face is going to be a bad guy? Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be fighting Kratos like year later. No. Wow. I yeah, I do appreciate how Muro though is totally like, you know what? Hey, take care of yourself. Don't push it. You know, like Muro is very like healthcare oriented. Anyway, let's let's switch to a very cool action camera pan. What the? Jump over the desk and then leave Agent Thorson to die. Goodbye. We got we got places to be. I'm so sorry. Bye, Agent Thorson. Bye, Agent Thorson. We need to punch some keys. Thankfully, we can't be attacked during cutscenes. Everyone pauses. We're good? We're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you for waiting while we looked at some doors being opened. Hi, you wanna... Yeah, sorry, I just... No. Excuse me. I do need to grab that health. Though. Thank you. I can't wait for uh, Oni 2 to be announced, where we get to play as uh, Agent Thorson, where it's revealed he actually survived. <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty incredible. I mean, he can he can survive. It is possible to stay there, beat up the guards, and make sure he lives. Like it is not impossible. It's just not quick, so we don't do it. But thankfully, like by being quick, we will save the lives of other people later on. So I feel that's important. Okay, so Thorson dies so others may live. I'm sure yeah, exactly. he appreciates that thought. Excuse me, I just need to punch this terminal. Thank you. Yep, I'm just gonna stand on your face. This guy's all like, who opened this door? I, excuse me, I just really need to go. Thank you. All right, there we go. It's really cool how so much of this game involves like breaking glass. However, uh, you you can't actually break this one. This specific, these windows you cannot break. There's gonna be a, a cool reason for that later. I just wanted to show it off. Anyway, uh, if only Agent Thorson were here to see me, but nope, he's dead somewhere under here, ostensibly. Also, you'll notice I do this a lot. It's because when you slide into enemies, they will sometimes drop their weapon and never pick it up again. Also, here is my favorite room in the game. Check out, like, what do these machines do? I don't know. Look at this cool red thing. That's great. We'll never see any of that ever again. Ah, dang it. If you jump through the window, you can make Shinatama's update overlap Griffin. And basically, it makes you skip this whole dialogue. But we get to hear Griffin actually agree with us for once, so that's okay. I'm on it. Here's a new objective. All right, so there's lasers. We're just gonna be running through some lasers. Oh no, we activated the turret. Well, hello, goodbye. The cool thing about sliding into enemies is that sometimes, like, you, you will always make them drop their gun, but sometimes, oh no, don't shoot me. <laughs> oh, don't do that. That's bad. Don't super. Don't do that. Uh, if you can make them drop their gun, you can then pick it up in the same action. And that's really cool and also gives you a gun. Also, the uh, I just got to say, the maintenance workers in this game are extremely motivated to defend their place of work. Pardon me, Kanoko. This, this game is kind of a dystopia. We used a wideband theta scan to locate the control mechanism that was used to activate the facility's defenses. 
Oh, by the way, uh, this was made by Bungie North. So, you know, giant AI, giant deadly AI somewhere in this game. I thought we tracked down the last of them. Apparently, Moro found one we missed or managed. You said this is the only game that they created? Uh, Bungie North, specifically. It was kind of like a, another studio. So, you had regular Bungie and then Bungie North. Bungie North made Oni. Uh, the development of this game was real rough. Like, like, plagued by problems, but they managed to make the game. They started making two, but just could not complete it, unfortunately. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Look real cool, though. Okay, everyone needs to stop shooting at me for just a moment, all right? All right, so I'm just gonna try to attract... Hey, hey, come over here, buddies. All right, perfect. Trip him up. Press these buttons. This guy just doesn't know what's going on. And then we... Wow. All right, oh, by the way, all the enemies have cool attacks and they yell out the names of them whenever they do them. We also get some of these later. We don't get to use them because they're not quick. Maybe I'll get to show off one of them at some point. You... Wow, wow. You actually blocked me, that's fair. Anyway, let's go fight a giant AI, also known as the Deadly Brain. So yeah, a TCTF, like Technology Crimes Task Force, basically, uh, like, um, Kanoko starts the game as a sort of, like, technology cop, which is kind of unfortunate, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to see that situation develop. Also, I just want to point out, you know, Kanoko's, like, whole deal was, hey, wait, no, like, they're gonna get away unless we go bust them immediately. I can just drop whatever I'm doing over at this, this, like, warehouse and drive over in my cool motorcycle to bust them. And she did that. But she also found the time to change into her dress uniform on the way. And I think that's extra dedication. Also, the brain found Twitter. That's gold right there, to be honest. <laughs> Changing into your dress uniform on a motorcycle or finding Twitter? Oh, well, uh, no one, no one's goal should be finding Twitter. <laughs> Oh, accidentally set off some bad stuff. Please don't kill me. That would suck. Ah. Give give AI feet 2019. Also, for some reason, they gave they gave this brain a giant bomb. So. Questionable choices, you know, on the part of whoever it is that set this whole thing up. All right, just gonna be real careful because I don't want to die here because the save point was at the start of this fight. But if you're quick enough, you can pretty much just like always dodge the, the little laser trip wires in this one. And there we go. One deadly brain completely, uh, I guess shut it down. I guess this is what we're doing. We're just shutting it down. So we had one AI go rampant. It is now officially a bungee game. Also, by the way, Kerr is reporting to Griffin. Oh, by the way, remember that window that we shot? We just jumped through it. That's why you couldn't shoot it. Kanoko had to like physically jump through it and break it. As far as we can tell, yes, but prolonged stress could be dangerous. She insisted. Anyway, old men are arguing about us, but that's okay. We're we're just gonna uh I'm getting tired of listening I guess just go to another building and fight people there. So I I really fell in love with this game back when I started playing it. And one of the reasons is how do you start the third level? Well, how about a really cool motorcycle scene and a boss fight? Also Kanoko had the time to change back. All right, so this is Barabbas. We're just gonna grab this. Also, by the way, uh, if you heal more than you're supposed to, you become extremely strong, extremely powerful. All your attacks do a lot more damage, and you you like you basically take very little damage from all sources. That's gonna be very important later. 
so we just want to, ideally, we want to like kick Brava's spine, but sometimes he will just decide to not show us his back. So we just gotta do what we can. Oh, all right, he decided to fall down. Like, even mid-bosses know when to call it quits and fly towards the seams in the sky. She's with them. Who is with them? The agent you warned me about. All right, so I'm going to be doing a thing. Uh, my friend Taylor, who uh, got me into speedrunning, found out this little trick here. If you walk up to this, this guard spawns. And that guard, when defeated, gives a health pack. So this is great for safety uh, in this specific level, because this level is very long and very weird. And did that guy see me? No, thank goodness. Very long, very weird, but we're going to be doing some, some tricks to it. Anyway, here's something we're going to see a lot of. We need to activate three terminals to open the door. Just going to wait for this guy to start walking. There we go. Uh, on the second floor is the other bit of RNG in this game, our biggest enemy... Captain Useless. Captain Useless, the guy in the back, has to go into that room and press a button. He will do this maybe 50% of the time. He did it. Oh my gosh, he actually pushed Yay! the button. Yay! I'm so proud of wow. you, Captain Useless. I can't believe you did it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Perfect. Cool. So yeah, sometimes he won't, and you will need to like divert enemies away and go hit the button yourself. It's like a huge time loss in this run. But when he decides to just, you know, push the button, then it's all good. So yeah, this is great already. So we need one more bit of health because as I was saying, um, when you overheal by uh, healing like past the 100% mark of your health bar, you glow and you become super powered. All your attacks do way more damage and you take way less damage, including damage from falling off a building. So what if we just skipped the whole level and just jumped into the ending cutscene? We, we skipped a ton of stuff. There was a cool part where you like take a guy with a, with a bomb on him and throw him through a skylight. We're not going to see any of that because, you know, skips. This is horrible. Syndicate troops are attacking the airport. So there's at least dozens of people in this regional airport, which flies to somewhere. They never, they, they tried to like specifically stay vague in this game, but there's like some really cool things in this airport and we will hopefully not get to see any of them because uh, of a really cool thing in this game that, you know, you can shoot out a lot of the windows. Well, that leads to some cool stuff. So let's see if I can make this work. So shoot this, shoot this, shoot this, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna have probably have to try this a few times because it's really tricky. What if I just got it the first try though? Cool. So uh, we're just gonna skip this entire level. Yay! However, it's not over yet. There's the hardest jump in the game is coming right up. There we go. So normally we'd fight through the airport into this field. Also, by the way, there's these planes here. Uh, they're pointed at the terminal. There's no runway. They're fenced in. Their engines are idling. Where are they gonna go? I have no clue. There's, I mean, vertical takeoff and landing planes exist in this game. They look nothing like this. I'm, I'm still perplexed as to like what the plan was for this airport, but it's not a problem. We just need to go, uh, run out of bounds. Look at the, look at the very like meager geometry that you're just really supposed to see from afar and uh, jump into the end of the level because they didn't make an outside for that tunnel. Because why would you? Why would they? Anyway, here's the hardest jump in the game. Fingers crossed. Made it. Oh my gosh. There we go. Whew. And we're done. That was the level. Great this job. Level. Thank you. Usually takes a lot of time. Okay, so. Don't shoot me. Thank you. So we need that guy's health pack. Are you going to be a jerk? Oh, you're going to be a jerk. I'm just trying to kill you and rob you. What's your problem, dude? Actually, Xander, I'm sorry. I, I messed it up. Let me try again. You did it! Great job. Thank you. I love I love Shinatama so much. Like, 
the she, she is the best little sister robot. I use her as a soundboard for my like life splits and everything, and also for my stream alerts because she's just so good. She's great. She's the best. We'll learn more about her later. In the meantime, though, uh, okay. The next part of this level has a very tricky skip. I will try for it. Sorry, I'm busy. I'm explaining something. I will try for it, but if I don't get it, I have a backup. So I guess we'll see if... All right, excuse me. I'm just going to grab... Buddy, I'm trying to explain something here. All right. Okay, here we go. So I grab this... This guy is relentless. I grab this, uh, this uh, optical camouflage. Checkpoint is right here. So thankfully, if I mess it up, we should be good. So I'm just gonna boop this guy. He will probably forget he ever had that rifle. He's just gonna leave it there. Doesn't have his name on it, doesn't care. So let's see if we can make this work. Drop this guy, he shoots him. I grab his gun, I grab his, I grab his gun. There we go. Yep, perfect. He, that other guard forgot that his, um, his gun existed. See, there he is. Like, what is, what even are guns, honestly? Perfect. I'm gonna overheal, and then hopefully I'll have time to do this. Shoot a grenade. And there we go. So that's the one and only grenade jump. Uh, if you're overhealing, well then you can take a lot of damage, including the one hit kill damage of getting shot with a grenade launcher point blank. But none of that matters because we're under the floor. Do you like being under the floor, Liz? I actually do like being under the floor. Nice. Um, I like, I have like the opposite of claustrophobia and I used to like hide under my bed and just kind of like rest down there because I found it comfortable. Yeah, like isn't this nice? We're just under the floor. Under the floor. All those bad guys can't hurt us no more. We're under the floor. And uh, we're just going to be basically just running along the collision box of the level. Seeing like there's so much, there's like laser grids and poison gas and like there's so much to this level and we're going to see none of it because we're just going to run right to the end. We actually just need to grab a cutscene enabling item and then run to the cutscene. And we got the force field, this, the Kanoko's glowing because she got a force field. Uh, that basically stops all guns. You still get hurt from melee weapons, but it stops all bullets and stuff. So that's very, very useful. Especially since there's a there's a buddy later in this, well, he's not a buddy, he's a jerk, with a Von der Graf pistol, which basically, oh, hold on, I'm gonna look up, floor stops existing, and we're in. So uh, basically, there's people with zappy pistols that stun you, and they stun you, and then they like beat you up, and they keep stunning you, and it's just, it's a whole deal. However, if you have a force field, the gun just does nothing. Ow! Wow, okay. Jeez. Oh, right, uh, this, this guy's gonna try to raise the alarm. Uh, let's see if we can outrun him. We basically have to run up here. There's gonna be a guy with a, with a rocket launcher, and then the guy with the sparky pistol, all right? Now we need to reach the cutscene activation volume before enemies get close. Fingers crossed. Yes, we made it. There, end of level. Easy as that. So we did this whole thing specifically to uh, put a bug on Murrow, the evil syndicate mastermind's uh, vertical takeoff and landing plane. And we totally fail at hiding the from them also, but that's not a problem. Scanners indicate a standard comm link as well as a second set of subdermal transmissions. Analysis suggests that she is neural. So basically, Muro knows that Kanoko is super powered, even though Kanoko doesn't know it. He just found out that Shinatama, our little sister robot, exists. He knows that she's keeping tabs on us. So he's gonna go try to steal Shinatama. So Kanoko's coming back from her first day on the job. It's been a lot. No, night's falling. It's evening. She's just gonna like check the office just one more time. 
But what's this? This is perhaps one of the coolest parts of the game. Also, uh, due to, like, I think, development constraints, a lot of the environments in this game are very, very sparse. But uh, you get used to it. It's a very fun game to run because a lot of the RNG is tied to combat, so there's a lot to optimize. And there's cool stuff like sliding into work. And cool music starting. And also, Kunoko got changed again, because she does that. She has a lot of outfits, and I really, really appreciate her fashion sense. So we're going to be sneaking around here, because there's a guy with a machine gun. We don't want him to see us. He's, he's going to ruin our day. We're going to grab the sniper rifle. Sniper rifles in this game are kind of weird, because they shoot a uh, super-cooled spike of mercury. Because it sounded really cool to say that, ah, yes, the sniper rifle shoots... A, a like an icicle of mercury because if it doesn't kill you then mercury poisoning will but then they they didn't quite research the fact that no mercury poisoning actually takes a very long time that is maybe not as effective as you think it is but it sure sounds cool I love how motivated this specific Syndicate henchman is. So, we're gonna ignore the first floor, we don't need it. I'm gonna open, shoot this guy, grab this gun. A lot of, like, uh, we, we will sometimes grab uh, machine pistols in this game. Uh, oh, come on, I was almost done, I just needed to press enter, you big jerk. Kanoko, sometimes I really wish you would just push the buttons. Thank you. There we go. Oh, wow, okay. Sure. St still gonna leave. Alright. So, yep, that guy just realized, wait, there's 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 bad people in the building. Yeah, no, yeah, it's 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 kind of a bad scene right now. Should, maybe should not be here. So we're just gonna grab... You can, you can grab stuff off the floor when you're sliding or tumbling, which is really, really cool. And a lot of the movement in the game come down, comes down to optimizing when you're sliding, when you're rolling, when you're jumping. It's like, there's a lot to it. The way combat and movement and no. weapons are so intricately linked in this game is just very, very... Like, it's, it's very, very deep in terms of gameplay. And it makes running this game very exciting. Even though it is like, I mean, this is like casually, this is maybe eight, like six to eight hours. The run though is under two hours. And it like, I think the world record currently is about like 120, 121, 122. It is like, we are getting very, very close to the 120 mark. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna be doing some quiet time stuff here. Okay, there we go. So, uh, the enemies outside will sometimes start shooting at you. And if they shoot at you, uh, Buddy uh, stops talking. And you need him to go through his dialogue to give you the laser torch. Thankfully, if you bring up the diary, it pauses everything except audio dialogue. So, you can just bring up the diary, let the sound file of the current thing that's being said play out and then like dismiss the diary and bring it right back up again so in game time like barely a second or two has passed but you went through this entire dialogue and didn't give the guard outside like enough time to realize you were in there and to come like mess everything up there's like it's very kind of precise little uh exploit but i really like it it's like it's one of the tiny things you can do in this game to really shave off the second like, you know, shoot shoot some windows dramatically and jump through them. Alright. Sometimes a sniper tries to get one last shot in, but he didn't. Excuse me. Alright, and 
Use the last few bullets to break out this window, and here we are. Liz, they're stealing our little sister robot. No! No, they're not allowed to. I know! Let's beat up Kratos Lightyear. You again. You can't. Kratos Lightyear. God, he looks so creepy. I hate his, like. I know. Veins. I know. He's, uh, we will not actually see the reason behind the fact that he looks so gnarly. But there's a reason why he looks so gnarly. Oh, he did the Earthquaker. Well, if we won't see it, what is the reason why he looks so Okay, gnarly? uh, so. Barabbas has been um, beefed up using the same superpower stuff that Konoko has. He is, he, he's not like, he didn't get like the best treatment, but he did get some of it. So this is like his ultimate form. This like, so presumably Konoko could get like some of, like something like this too. So he's, <laughs> he's like sorry, the I'm evil version of you. Uh, he's, he's, yeah, he, he got the same superpower juice you did, and this is like his ultimate form. So like he's, you know, he 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 leveled up too quickly and didn't get the good stat bonuses. <laughs> All of his stats are in move and nothing yep. else. Yep, yep. Also. So, cutscene, we show Griffin. Griffin owns two couches. This is practically half of all of the sitting surfaces in this entire game. This, this world has a dearth of places where you can sit down. So, Griffin, like, we kind of see, like, no, he's actually, he's hoarding all the couches. Like, there's probably something bad about him. Anyway, we get a cool flying segment. We get a glider. We will never see it again, unfortunately. But it's real cool. It's nicely modeled. So I'm going to uh, load the checkpoint because while we were gliding, the, the enemies were moving. So by loading, we restart their patrol route. And that is important because of the uh, guy with the rocket launcher. Because we want him to be here. Because sometimes he'll just like launch himself into the, into the, the great beyond. But he didn't this time, unfortunately. Sometimes he does and it's hilarious. All right, just gonna try to, please let me leave, okay? So this level is a little bit tricky. There's a lot of like skips and they're all very precise. Uh, a lot of them hinge on having a very specific amount of health. So this is like a very tricky part of the run. Hopefully I don't mess it up. I might, but you know, that's why this game, this game is very nice because there's lots of saves. It's full of auto saves. You can like, oh, thank you. Here, Goodbye. Okay, so I'm gonna need to walk off the earth right around here. Made it, okay. So it looked like I died, but I actually just activated the uh, the checkpoint in midair. So I just load it and I'm fine. Because the checkpoints remember where you were, not how fast you were hurtling towards the earth. So we're good, it's all good. If only people would stop shooting at us. But you know, you can't have it all. All right. Oh my gosh, she just... Shh. Okay, she's just like being really rude. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shoot her with a sniper rifle. Uh, I dropped the sniper rifle there because uh, this resets the cooldown. Oh, oh, that's bad. That's real bad. Did not mean to miss him there. Oh, did he? Oh, he emptied it. All right, we're just going to uh, reload the last checkpoint because I actually need him. I need that gun to be full. So, oh, I also need to not fall into the grade beyond. So we're just we're just going to forget all of that happened. And just jump over here and miss it. OK, that's fine. That's fine. This is why. This game is so nice because you, you don't even need to pause and make saves. The game just saves for you. And we will be using the fall to your death into a safe. Excuse me, door. Come on. 
we, we get to use that a lot of times. Also, this is a, a newly, this is a recent route that I've uh, started taking. I usually took a much safer route, but this has been kind of like a, a fun little one that the world record holder uses. So I'm just gonna, excuse me, did you, thank you. Oh no, you, you need, buddy, you need to leave, I'm sorry. What is the, uh, so what is the world record? World record is, I think, oh, I should have, I should have looked this up. Uh, I think it's up to something like 120, oh, please, yeah, it's 122, 120 something. It is very, it is very, very, like, it's very low compared to what it used to be. Like, back in the day, like, NMS did the first run, and then I, like, learned that using some routing, and then a bunch of other folks started uh, also... Uh, doing this run. It's just been like a lot of fun to just discover all these different routes. I'm actually gonna Yeah, I lost a little bit too much health uh, I'm going to Let the overheal run out because I need to be absolutely full in the next part to survive the jump that's coming up Did you know Wait. how many uh, Games there are on speedrun.com that have the letters Oni in them? Oh, there's there's so many of them. There's there so are many. a lot. Okay, this also this jerk just re I was not planning on this jerk being here. Well, that sucks. All right, uh, are we? Nope, we're not. That's okay. We're just gonna restart. Sometimes the game does this to you. It's unfortunate, but it happens, and you just gotta you just gotta roll with it. That's fine. This like uh, I am. I was not going to uh pork to showcase a world record run by any means, but. I also do want to show just how cool this game is and just like how much you can do with this old game that has a lot to it, turns out. And there we go. There's a lot of optimization still left to do. There we go, just gonna shoot that guy in the back. Whoops. And there we go. Now we're actually gonna be in a better situation. All right, now. Okay, please don't shoot me with your rockets. That would suck. There we go. We run off here, land here. We shoot out this window. This used to be an extremely difficult jump until someone figured out you can just run and then launch yourself like this. And there we go. And there we go. All right, there's a, uh, there's a grenade launcher here. We're gonna overheal. If at any point, you like you're about to get into trouble it is always better to overheal first than it is to heal later because you just get so much like such a damage boost and defense boost that it's way way more useful to uh overheal first what if you didn't have a spine there we go so now we have a battle buddy Battle Buddy and I, we're gonna head to the end of this corridor. Y'all right there, Buddy Bully? Battle Buddy. Battle Buddy. Battle Buddy. I found the time, by the way. I went through every single Sonic the Hedgehog game. Oh no! Oh right! They all cause... have Oni in them. <laughs> <laughs> and I found it, the world record is an hour and 21 minutes and 12 seconds. 21. Hour 20. Yeah, that's that's real good. Also, uh, I think I think our battle buddy left. That's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, there's like this. It's been kind of amazing to see just how low the run has gotten, and there's still so many optimization. Like, uh, there is a perfect run of this game, but it would require you to successfully navigate every single battle, land all of the like grenade launcher headshots. It's it's hard, is what I'm saying. So there's a there's a lot of optimization that you can still do in this one. All right. Okay. So she's got the silly string gun. We need to take it away from her. All right. This is one of the rare moments where we actually need to defeat all these enemies. There we go. So what what's happening right now is like Kanoko's superpower is starting to peak. And uh, Griffin's starting to freak out because there's okay. There's this whole thing that's happening in the background that you're slowly learning about 
from like reading all the terminals that we're actually skipping. And it's this whole thing about like how Kanoko's like whole superpower thing is actually like Griffin knows about it. He's been like keeping Kanoko in his back pocket just in case the syndicate like brings out something evil or something similar. But he also wants to control Kanoko and he's basic his whole stance is well, we keep her as an ace in the hole, but if she if she gets too dangerous, like we she's out of here. So, incidentally, this is why uh, we learn later, Shinitama's been lying to uh, Griffin the whole game. Every time she says, like, oh, no, like, uh, K like uh, Kanoko's uh, Deoden latency is holding, like, no, it's not. Kanoko's getting super powerful, getting out of control, but Shinitama doesn't want her big sister to get in trouble. It's just that wholesome. Also, that grenade just flew straight through that guy's legs, and that is, that was kind of unfortunate. Right. Hello. Goodbye. Okay. So we want to headshot a bunch of folks with a grenade launcher, but it's real hard. Yeah, there you go. That's how you do it. Uh, the grenade launcher like uh, explodes into a bunch of limb grenades, but if you manage to headshot someone with it, they just like they just don't. They just explode everywhere. I mean, everywhere in that person's face. So that's pretty good. All right, so we just need to... Uh... All right, no back for you. So yeah, uh, I tend to do a lot of kicking and like the front throw with the kick because uh, in this game, uh, if you're gonna fight, it's useful to uh, fight in ways that will throw enemies into other enemies and distribute the damage around. This, this game has a lot of really, really cool moves you can use in a fight. Oh, by the way, also, yeah, this is a major plot dump. Basically, Kanoko is actually my Hasegawa. There's been this whole government cover-up. And Shinatama is going to try to, like, lay down the truth. Also, yeah, by the way, like, Shinitama is not only his little sister robot, she's kind of a clone of us. She's... Oh, interesting, she's an AI copied from our brain. Where else have we seen this? Huh. I don't understand. Sir, bio readings indicate that the host is in close proximity... I love my new, uh, fanfiction, Boast in the Gel. It's wonderful. <laughs> yep. This, this game is both very ghost in the shell. <laughs> very Ghost in the Shell, also very, uh, very bungee. And basically Griffin's saying, you know what, uh, Shinitama is also a walking bomb, because that's what we do with little sister robots. We outfit them with giant explosions. So they're basically figuring, you know what, let's just blow up Shinitama and catch Kanoko in the wave, and we get rid of all our problems, ostensibly. Sure, that makes sense. So yeah, there has to be something I can do. This game is real bad about no! fridging characters in front of us to motivate us. Goodbye, Shinatama. So we have to say a tearful goodbye to Shinatama as she slowly starts to count down her own explosion. She did it. Great job. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, no, there's a guy, okay, whatever, sure. So, uh, here's a fun game for folks at home. Uh, how many shockwaves will Shinatama's death explosion leave? It's usually between one and four. I'm gonna bet three. How about you, Liz? Four, three, two, I'll bet four. Oh, just one. Oh, Barely fuck. one at that. Oh, well. There's gonna be another game at one of these uh, lightning pillars later in, in this level. Thank you. All right, there's going to be another guard with a uh, Von de Graaff pistol, the little sparky thing, and there's going to be also another one with the silly string laser. Both of these are real bad, unless you have a force field, in which case it makes them completely useless. Hey, hey, come here. Oh, no one in chat got it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so the optimal route for this room is to only take the upper path. That is extremely difficult. I can't do it. Uh, world record run does it. I can't. Hey, 
So we're just going to take the upper path here and then just gracefully bow out and wait for this. Uh, there we go. You know, this does a lot of damage. Even hit me from over there, weirdly enough. There we go. So you can run and grab. We basically want to do this because there's like uh, some uh, health and stuff over here. There we go. Just going to grab this. All right, let's actually not get hit by the by the giant laser. There we go. You can also do some like pretty nice skips here, but I'm playing it extremely safe. And also, let's see if we can despawn some enemies by jumping over here. Yes, perfect. This room is usually full of bad guys. Now it's not. Okay, next game. There's gonna be an enemy at the end of this pillar. Yes or no, will he survive by the time we get to him? Nope. He did it. He bit it. Sometimes he will even, like, jump off the edge himself for some reason. But it is entirely possible for him to reach you and be, try to, like, you know, put up a valiant, a valiant fight. But it, it's, it's just one mook on a pillar of lightning, what what else? What can you really do against the protagonist? Poor guy. Nah, uh, he's trying his best. There's the guy guy downstairs with the machine pistol though. Got like clips for days. Just gonna keep shooting at me for the, for the whole level. Okay, we wanna get into that uh, yellowish orange door. So that's like right above here. Yep, that's the next one. We don't have a force field anymore. That's bad. Let's see if I can Try to... Oh, there we go. Cool. Because uh, the thing about that pistol is it freezes, it stuns you, and then enemies can punch you, and then use the pistol again. So they can stun lock you pretty badly, which you don't you don't want to happen. Hi, civilian. Hi, sorry, I'm kind of being hunted by uh, criminals and also cops. Weird. Both are working against me. So, uh... Coming up is the only part of the game where stealth is actually important, but we will not show it because I have enough health to just to just run out here. Let's just go. Let's just do it. All health, no stealth. Yep, because at some point, there we go, cutscene begins. If you don't have enough health, you can die in this cutscene because the remaining shockwaves will still do damage to you, even though this is running and you will just die and then the cutscene just stops. Also, again, TCTF deciding, you know what? Let's put our own colleagues in danger just to try to catch this rogue agent. So, yeah, everyone just kind of hightail it out of here. Oh, no. Oh, no, Sergeant Chunks is lagging behind. Do you think he's going to make it? All right, Kanoko's good. Sergeant Chunks, though. Oh, gosh. Griffin likes. Ah, dang it. I have her. <laughs> we killed our colleagues for nothing. Could have given her a chance. I gave you both a chance, Doctor. That was my mistake. All units, Kanoko has gone rogue. All right, class B threat, code red. It's time for class bread. Kanoko's gone rogue, but first she's gonna change into another really cool outfit. Check this out. So. This level is a lot. It's the regional state building, you know, because it's it's in the region and you need you need some state stuff. So we're gonna go to the regional state building. Because now Kanoko knows her name. She wants to know the truth. She wants to find out something about herself. But she's gonna go punch a bunch of people, uh, activate three terminals to open, to like act, you know, turn on three green lights, open a door. But there's a ninja that you just saw like a few seconds ago, gonna steal her past on a laser disc. And we're gonna have to fight up and down and all around this whole like building. I have two men down over here. Get us some backup fast. Stop, don't move a muscle. I don't have time. To First though, we're gonna beat up these two uh, rent-a-cops who just decided to make trouble. Right? There we go. Okay, so there's like this level is a lot. 
thankfully, um, the art director decided that diamond-shaped windows would look real good. So let's just shoot out these uh, these three windows specifically. Let's do the little tailor jump. Oh, that was bad. Not supposed to do that. Let's just try again. That's why we have saves. It's actually real bad to get outside here because there's a bunch of snipers who just decided to show up today. Hey, let's just show up at the regional state. Oh no, that's right, there was a cutscene. They specifically said they'd be ready for that. Ah oh, well. Anyway, try again. We just do this. Go around here. There we go. We jump over there. We jump over here. We do a little bit of a forward jump. We look up, the roof stops existing, and now we're on the roof. And then we jump over here on the other roof. And, um, you know, all that thing about the ninja stealing our past and everything. Let's just skip all of that and just jump directly to the end of the level. We just need to jump around here. And there it is. The game doesn't care if you open doors. It just cares, did you step into the end of level cutscene? Yes. Well, here you go. Have an end of level cutscene. So this is why a like 35 minute level turns into a three minute level. And this is one of the things that got me into running this game because gosh, you can just, there's so much you can do with I love, the fact. <laughs> I love early 2000s 3D platformers because there's just always with this stuff. And it's yeah. wonderful. It's amazing. They just decided, yeah, you can just step on anything. And yeah, you can shoot out windows. Well, what if we put the two together all right, I grab this, grab this gun, dump it here. Uh, yeah, there is some like a really risky thing you can do here. I don't do it because it's an extremely risky jump that has you restart the level if you fail it. So, you know, marathon strats. Uh, so I have a very limited amount of time cloaked. I'm going to do uh, my best to use it judiciously. And because I need to get past a guy with a silly string gun. And I need to run past a ninja. Because um, cutscenes sometimes don't activate if you're in battle. But if he doesn't see me, there we go. Elevator cutscene happens. All right, uh, this guy has a hell rocket launcher. I'm going to grab it. My gun. Now I can shoot hell rockets. They're actually called something else. I just like to call them Hell Rockets because I think it sounds neat. And also, it is literally a like screaming ball of hate that uh, indiscriminately like hunts around and uh, decides to like leech life away from um, from all that your is, enemies and sometimes you. That is a really good name for metal band. Oh it's yeah, free, free for all you in chat who want to start a metal band. Screaming ball of hate. Go right ahead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I just really love this part of the level where you're running through giant TV screens. I think that's just real cool. All right, just gonna grab this health. Just gonna grab this, whatever this thing is. And then, oh, excuse me, could I just, yep, just let me. Okay, there we go. So, save. Okay, uh, by the way, just gonna show it off a little bit. The fastest way to do this is to jump over here and do this and then jump up top. That's the fastest way to do it. I couldn't do it because, uh, I missed the first jump, but that is the fastest way to do this. Um, the safest way to do this is to go here, uh, kick that ninja, and then go around. It's a little bit slower, but it is way safer. All right, now, uh, sometimes we miss this jump. Oh, hey, it was one of those sometimes. Let's try again. Uh, so here's a, a little detail about Kanoko's run. Uh, Kanoko's run speed is constantly oscillating depending on which frame of her running animation she's on. When she takes a step, she goes a little bit faster. So if you jump during the part of her run where she's going a little bit faster, you go further. It is extremely difficult, for me at least, to time that. So sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. Oh, right, by the way, yeah, that's right. So anyway, this guy, this guy, get a load of this ninja. Basically, he, okay. What he's explaining is like, uh, okay. 
this thing that Kanoko's got in her. It's called the Chrysalis. She's like super powered because of it. It's basic. What it does is when you get hurt, the the chrysalis makes it so that when you heal you heal into a super evolved version of yourself so the more you get hurt the better you get which means it's like kind of wild but also hardcore anyway we're gonna uh shoot a bunch of hell rockets here because uh while this gun is extremely deadly you can only shoot it every 30 seconds but if you drop a gun it forgets so you can just keep shooting it and shooting it and there's only so many hell rockets you can take even as a giant like super powered ninja Encouraged me not to look too deeply into my past. So we're gonna we're gonna just grab our little laser disc of past there, and uh, just mosey on along. But you know, no harm done. It's all good. We fought. We won. We can just let bygones be bygones. Are we the same? No, I have nothing in common with him. Never mind. Nothing. So. Did I mention that you cannot skip the cutscenes in this game? My father's last. The start oh, no. of this level is a three, three and a half minute cutscene. You cannot skip. It's basically Kanoko playing solitaire and reading a bunch of lore. But basically, what like it's saying like, oh, by the way, the world is extremely toxic outside of cities. Though the atmospheric conversion center where you were fighting earlier, that's actually making cities livable. Like it's hiding the fact that the world is actually way, way worse than everyone's saying. Which is kind of why you realize, oh yeah, the TCTF, the people you work for, they're kind of like hiding the truth from everybody. And your parents were trying to uncover this. And that's why they made the chrysalis so that humanity could like survive in a harsh environment. There's this whole thing. What I usually do in this part of the run when I run this is I use this uh, segment to uh, do a micro talk. Because what are you going to do? You can't just watch the same cutscene over and over again. And I pretty much just summed it up. So this time, I would like to take this time to just thank everybody for the opportunity to show off this game here on like frame fatales as part of like gdq hotfix it's been great like uh i got into speedrunning thanks to like the whole like hubbub of uh gdq and, and other uh speedrunning events but also i got into speedrunning because i saw people like me running games and that was incredibly motivating and it kind of showed me like hey you it's actually possible to do this and like also the people in the community specifically said no you can totally do it like you can just pick up a game and play it. And every time you get a little bit better, and it's great to get better at a thing that you like. And, you know, here we are, like, it's just a few years later and I'm like running several games and it's great. And I'm not like a world-class runner by any means, but it's a lot of fun. And it's kind of like informed the way I design games, the way I write books. Something real bad just happened all the way in the cutscene, But like, it's amazing what just like having role models did for me to help me get into, you know, speedrunning. And I hope that like this event has the same effect so that, hey, it's kind of amazing just how on short notice a bunch of dedicated folks can put together a whole event with a bunch of lady runners and show, hey, there's a lot of us here. You can just apply. You can just try it. And there's really no excuse not to have a bunch of really cool ladies in your event because we're out there we just just need to give us a chance and you can see some really cool games even games that turn into creepy dreamscapes where your brother oh by the way he's your brother tries to kill you but we're just going to skip the fight because we can just uh jump here and then jump here and then hey we just skip the fight beautiful so I remember thinking, I'm like, they have to be related because they're the only two with purple hair. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it works. Yep, uh, your mom had your hairstyle, your dad had purple hair. That's it. That's, that's, oh, wow. Okay, I've never seen that before. That's a cool, that's a cool move. So uh, we come here because uh, this is the place where only one of the ninjas will follow you. And these ninjas are actually like real rough. But if you just keep kicking them in the face, it's kind of, it's kind of all right. You just, you just get it, you, you just like, succeed. So we're just gonna keep punching him in the face or kicking him in this case. And there we go. Also, there's a giant, there's a giant Shinitama here. I just like to show it off. 
All right. Oh, hello. All right. If you if you catch her in the right. Oh wow. What what's what are you doing here, little buddy? What are you doing here? All right. Once again, using the tactic of what if I just kept throwing you into your friends? There we go. Okay, so we're we're sitting pretty right now. Oh no, Dream Griffin, and he's got a gun. You lied to me. I told you what you needed to know. And you used me. I did my job, which is better than there I. There we go. We stole his gun. That's extremely important. We're gonna need it later. So we turn invisible. We uh, wait until Griffin loses track of us, and then we break his back, and then we run away until he loses track of us, and then we sneak back in, and spoiler alert, we break his back again, hopefully, if he doesn't turn around. Oh, he turned around like a jerk! Sometimes enemies in this game just like don't want to play fair. But that's okay. You're invincible when you're throwing. So you can just like you can just like you can you can just like please let me throw you. Thank you. Gosh. All right. One of these guys has a health pack. We don't actually need it though. Let's just go. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. We're going to jump around a cutscene activation. Go here and did they follow us? Yeah, they didn't. Okay, cool. We're good. <laughs> now it's time to fight ourselves. Hello, Mai. What? Mai Hasegawa. That's your name, isn't it? I I'm not sure who I am. Oh, so yeah, word of the state. That's because basically... Okay, so... Kanoko is Kuroko Muro, they're they're like they're twins. Their parents were developing the chrysalis. Uh bad stuff happened. Dad uh became a single father, and uh basically when uh when stuff went down, um I think I think bad stuff happened to dad and basically Kerr, who is also by the way your uncle. Uh, decided to, uh, like, bring you, Kanoko, to the TCTF for protection. But the Syndicate made off with Muro, and both of you had the Chrysalis super revolving thing. So that's why Griffin kind of, like, kept you on and made sure you were okay, because he wanted to know, well, well, if the Syndicate has a super-powered person, we should have one too, just in case. So he's always been, like, you know, keeping you there just in case you became useful. That's why he's kind of a jerk. Where's Griffin's pet doctor today? So, welcome to science prison, where runs go to die, where science goes to jail. Uh, this is... Okay, there might be a few resets. This is where I need to count steps. Okay. We just load to reset and... Okay, I messed it up, but it's okay. We're good, we're alive, it's all good, it's all fine. Uh, that room can be real rough, but if you just remember, three, two, two, one, kick, slide, kick, kick. You're all good. You just need to like do a very specific set of moves and go through all these lasers without activating all the sniper turrets. Thankfully, sometimes they just miss you and you just keep going. So we're just we're just gonna pretend this just went down to plan and we're all good. Also, yes, I'm I'm glad to see people in chat also offering sympathy for that room. That room is rough, but also the rest of this level is rough because Science Prison has the longest stretch of game without a checkpoint. It's coming up soon. It is 
very, very nerve wracking. We're just gonna hope against hope that it goes well for us, but it might not. This is why the estimate is an hour 50. <laughs> So Kerr is about to, basically he's going to put us in a giant MRI, scan us, explain to us about the whole chrysalis and healing into a super powered version of ourselves and all the thing I explained. We're just going to reload because that actually puts us ahead here. But the thing is, uh, like Kerr explaining all this to us takes a very long time. It's an extremely long cutscene, and you can't skip cutscenes. And at the end of that cutscene, he dies. So we're gonna save him. <clears throat> Sorry, we're gonna save him. We're gonna uh, use some of the agency we have and make sure that we just skip that entire thing. However, the one unfortunate part of skipping that giant cutscene is we do not get the save afterward. So that was the last checkpoint we get in this entire level. If anything goes wrong, we have to redo everything I'm doing right now. And that's unfortunate. Like it's kind of kind of kind of sad that like an hour plus into this run, this level decides if your run lives or dies. <laughs> also, oh, I'm so I'm so I'm so sorry for spoilers. I'm so sorry I should have said spoilers at the start. It's a really fun game though. I I, I really recommend picking it up. If you can find it, it's kind of hard to find. Please, 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 please. Yes, we did it. Did this game not do very well? Uh, not enough. It's kind of, it was kind of weird. It didn't get very well reviewed. Also, Kerr was in that room, uh, but he's gonna be fine. He's just there. It's all good. He's never gonna die, cause we will never activate the cutscene that kills him. But yeah, this game had a mixed reviews. Uh, it was one of the first games to use like the very modern twin stick controls on PS2, and people were just not having it back in 2001. Go figure. All right, lasers. Please don't shoot me, lasers. There we go. Okay. Okay, so blue guy needs to die. Please give me this gun. Okay, sometimes when I stand here, everyone forgets about me. Where is Xandra? Who knows? We don't know. Can't be in this corner. Okay. I did not get. Yep, this this is where stuff can go bad. Okay, so there's a guy with a grenade launcher, and he can pretty much Oh, he still has it. Are you did you run out of ammo, buddy? Did you forget I exist? I'm just gonna grab it, thank you. Please, there we go, gosh, that, that took a while. Okay, so someone should have dropped a health pack, so, no? Oh, that's rude. Oh wait, you're the guy who drops a health pack. Oh, well, let's forget about it then. All right, so next obstacle, Sergeant Run Killer. No, not you. Sergeant Run Killer is up ahead. He can kill our run. The last pass of that may have a drain wide enough. Okay, we're good. Whew. Okay, so uh, still not out of the woods yet, but thankfully, uh, with Sergeant Run Killer like not killing our run, uh, he just gave the chance to anyone else who might want to kill our run. I'm just gonna drop him in the acid. Can I? Oh, this might this might go bad. Okay, so we don't really care because we have All right, we have a health. 
which is not not ideal, honestly. And there's that guy. Oh, two guys. Well, that's bad. Oh, well, that's it. All right, so science prison happened. So I do apologize. We're going to have to start this over. Uh, it's always sad when science prison does you. Please pay your respects to the run. <laughs> That's okay, though. For we'll fun. make it. <laughs> May it rest in peace. Yep. It's science prison for you. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, like, a lot of different little things, like, conspire against you. Yep. As, as they would say here at, like, Hockey Night, like, the puck just wasn't rolling for us today. That's okay. We'll, oh we'll my god, you are so time. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> you just needed an A at the end of that. It was beautiful. Yeah. No, I'm French-Canadian. We don't say A. You know, like, in the hockey. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Alright, let's just keep doing that. That's fine. The uh, last two levels after this are extremely safe. So this really is like the last like kind of dangerous part of the run. There's Kirk, he's right there. Please don't knock me into the cutscene though. That would be real bad. Oh my gosh. Okay, see this is what I was talking about with like the silly string gun sometimes being overpowered. Oh wow, you had time to taunt? No! Oh my gosh. Kanoko, now is not the time to taunt a computer. <laughs> Just will not let me. There we go. No, no, Kanoko, just push the button. Thank you. Gosh. So yeah, this is this run. This is how this one can go. Bye, Uncle! No, these guys are here. It's just like a big hassle. You know, in the hindsight, I probably should have like just stayed behind and uh, killed the guy with a grenade launcher, because then I would have gotten his health back. You know, that's something to remember for next time. See, there's a lot of optimizations you can still do in this game. There's like so much. I, sorry, I just need to... Excuse me, I just need to get out of here. Oh my gosh, just let, let me go. Okay, I'm just gonna drop this gun here. Nope, well. Okay. Take two, with less health. That's, that's gonna go well. I believe. Thank you. Spirit bomb. Everyone spam faith in chat. We got this. Oh, no, now stuff's going bad. All right. However, someone dropped. Oh gosh, well, that's bad. <laughs> oh, by the way, we're outside. This is outside. Are we okay? Is it safe? Kinda. Gosh. No, please, please stop doing Okay, we'll just, we'll just play it safe. Because uh, folks with a uh, folks with with like this aura usually dr you're supposed to drop a force field. I had this whole thing where I was like gonna say that you you're supposed to drop a force field. That's kind of rude. All right, so we're gonna hope the hell rocket decides to go like snack on this guy's soul. No, come on, really. Wow, okay. Oh, there we go. God, okay, it just took a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now we got some health. Okay, now we are awash in health, and we have a force field, and we have the good gun. All right, so now okay, we're course. like in a better position. Yep. All right, this part of the game, still real rough. Because of this jerk. 
The last hey. acid that may have a drain. Thankfully, he doesn't have like eternal rockets, like eternal grenades. At some point, he runs out of them. Uh, maybe. Nah, he's got a. Dude, you're a maintenance worker. What are you doing? Don't make me hurt you. There we go. Okay. Well, that was that was not that was not very graceful. But we got we got a grenade launcher with a thing in it. We're gonna do our best, cause you know that's what we gotta do. We gotta do our best. I'm gonna be a little bit less gung ho about it. Also, sometimes the doors. Once a door decides it's gonna close, that door is gonna close. This level's usually not this hard. It's just you know it's a marathon. So what are you gonna do? All right, I'm just gonna let this guy come along because I think he's got a health pack. He does not. Wow. No, you're not supposed to. Welp. Here we go again. <laughs> Oni, everybody. You want to show off the cool stuff, and then science prison happens. Gosh, you know, Liz, I don't remember when the last time was that I had to redo science prison three times. Well, it's okay, because we're still having fun. Uh, yeah. I have a very important question for you. Yeah. Um, let's let's just have some pleasant conversation, you know, in science prison, the most pleasant place for conversation. Uh, what's your favorite kind of protein? Oh, okay, well, I am incredibly partial to uh, poutine with hot dog bits in it. That's my go-to. That Gosh, I love that. But that also... Good. Like I'm a I'm a big fan of breakfast poutine, especially because there's no like specific recipe for it. Ooh, like, like every what, every, what every is breakfast poutine. Breakfast poutine usually involves it's it's a breakfast take on poutine. Poutine being just like fries, fresh cheese curds, and uh, brown sauce. So like breakfast poutine usually involves some cool stuff. Like oh we're gonna we're gonna swap out the fries for some like. Uh, home fries. We're gonna maybe put some hollandaise inside of the instead of the brown sauce. We're gonna like maybe put an egg on top. There's like a lot of cool stuff that people do, that places do with breakfast poutine, and that I love really it. That's really good. It's really nice. It's a it is a big heaping greasy pile of food you just shovel into your mouth, and sometimes you just need that, you know. Right. All right, there we go. Do apologize for commentary being ahead. One day I will have a better setup for streaming. There we go. Try to figure out audio. Audio issues are just so hard. Okay, let's just do this. Yep, got the gun. That's perfect. That's great. What is midnight routine, Chad? I'm not sure I don't that know. Means. I don't know. That's news to me. Like, I guess a midnight snack. My midnight snack is usually just like cheese, which is a bad idea, but like, my snack at any point is just like cheese. Alright. So, here's the thing when this guy dies, his friend appears. So, we're gonna try to get into the invisible corner. Hey, I was talking about the corner where you're not supposed to see me. Okay, here we go. So hopefully doing this means that all of the... Yep, there we go. Yep, the... Our friend there, super duper dead. Exactly what we wanted to happen. Perfect. Now we have extra health. We have this. We're going to be playing it super safe. Ow. Just... Just go away.
The last acid that may have a drain wide Now we're just gonna let him run out of ammunition. Normally, like, okay, if you can do this. Oh, there's the guy. There's a maintenance worker with the health pack. There's the one who's like the accredited medic. Yes, I can do first aid. I can perform first aid. Oh, is that an intruder? I'm gonna ro go run in there. I'm gonna go take care of that intruder myself. Okay. Are you like, are you not done? Nope, oh, that's bad. Nope. Oh, nice. He just, he just jumped into the acid by himself. See, sometimes you come across like a good guy. He says like, you know what? Yeah, you're having you're having a tough time. You've like reset what three times, four times on this level. I'm gonna do you a solid. I'm just gonna jump into this acid. Sounds like you need it today. And you know what? I do. I really appreciate you, guy who jumped into the acid. What a good friend. Shoutouts to acid jumpers. Right? Shoutouts to acid jumpers. Shoutouts to shoutouts. Yep. Okay, uh, if you shoot here, you should take care of this one. All right, hello. Buddy, you're, you're, you're batting way. This is, this is not your pay grade. I'm trying to like say something cool and just tripping up over the, all of the idioms. There we go, we did it. So the whole reason for this level is, well, we know now we now know everything about the chrysalis and stuff. We need to leave. But ah, I know. What if we jumped into the acid? Like, we need to move the crane so we can jump over the grinder. That's gonna kill us. But the acid, we can probably heal faster than the acid can kill us. So that's that's the that's you know that's Kanoko's gameplay. What do you think? Dead. She has to be. Shouldn't we check it out? How do you suggest we do that? You gotta respect, How like, also, folks. It's like, you know what? That's fine. We're good. So, surprise, surprise. Kinoko ostensibly survives? Or are we just gonna get a cool scene of, hey, yep, she's dead. No waveform readings detected for over 48 hours. Given the magnitude of the last readings, we're confident the host was destroyed in the acid. Continue scanning. But Commander... Yes, sir. But, surprise, Kanoko has survived, and now she's in cool black leather. She wants answers. I'm sorry. I can't help you now. No one can. What do you give a man who has everything? Elevator office. That is incredible. <laughs> also, I love that they, they tried to make like the most like dramatic, powerful scene. And she just has like weird like dead fish eyes. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's fine. She's okay. You know, it's all right. Also, I do appreciate that my gun is missing a bullet because Kanoko shot out the window she was jumping through. So, you know, continuity. Your gun starts with one bullet less. That's like, that's nice. I appreciate that. That's pretty cool. All right, so we're going through TCTF headquarters in reverse. And just jumping down. I'm gonna take a deep breath. I know there's lag. I'm not sure how this uh, lined up, but... All right, we did it. So uh, we're gonna just shoot out this window here. All right, so this whole level has you going down the TCTF headquarters. And once again, you have to like activate a terminal, open up the next floor and everything. Only this time, uh, you can just skip it by shooting out the windows and jumping through them. And that basically also happens to skip the bit of code that spawns all the enemies. So we don't have to fight. We can just keep going. We can just like, you know, leisurely tap away at these terminals without any risk of taunting them by accident. And just, you know, mosey on along to the ground floor to follow after Griffin's elevator office. 
and get some answers. Will we get... Will we... Yes, we did! Awesome, we made it. Nope, don't suplex me. Please don't suplex me. Welcome to my... Welcome to my next light novel. Please don't suplex me. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Please miss me. Thank you. Go through the doggy door. And... Okay, so... This game has a spare versus kill mechanic at the end. We can spare Griffin or we can kill Griffin. We have a choice. Uh, my run uses the spare Griffin because uh, I have this fight down and I'm good with it. And it makes the final fight a little bit easier. But it can be faster to do it the other way around. Also, by the way, you know, you know that likable character who like died in front of you. We're gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna bring her back. Why not? What, what if, what if we made you destroy her? That that sounds like a fun time. So that's that's what this fight is. So we are very low on health here. We do not, we cannot do, we cannot like mistake. So, uh, if I make a mistake, I die. Thankfully, there was a save point at the start of this fight, so we should be good. So sorry. So sorry. But basically, uh, if, you if you decide to kill Griffin, there is a way to cheese through that, um, that force field he's hiding behind and skip this entire fight. It does make the final fight a little bit longer, but what do you care? You, you just skipped an entire boss fight. You're sitting pretty. All right, gotta dash through. By the way, uh, same same rules as before. If you trip these lasers at any point, uh, a bunch of turrets shoot at you, and you, since I have like practically no health left, I'm probably gonna die. All right, so dodge the lasers in interesting ways. This last part is real tricky. Oh, well, I missed that. Huh. <laughs> That's bad. You certainly don't want... Oh, by the way, when you respawn, you are frozen for a little bit. So you want... That's why I, like, didn't move at the start of this fight, because I wanted the, uh, the save point, which takes, like, a couple of seconds to activate. I wanted that save point to put me in the middle. If you're a little bit too gung-ho, the game will actually save your location in the path of some lasers and freeze you until they appear, I'm which sorry. means that it can be like impossible so to recover sorry. from that save. That is, this is the only point in the game where this happens, where it can get into like a permanently like uh, bad save. But you know, we try, we try not to make that happen. It's easy enough to avoid it. All right, let's just please give me the time. There we go. Ah, eh, we're, got, we're fine, we're fine, it's fine, it's all good. All right. Yep, we, we are slowly overriding the terminal with and replacing it with pictures of our beloved little sister robot. She means a lot to us, she's important. Also, if you take too long fighting her, she starts to, like, apologize for fighting you, and it is the most heartbreaking thing in the world. This is incredibly depressing. Yep. Oh, well, okay. Well, I tripped the laser. That's bad. Let me out. Okay. All right. We're good. Planned it perfectly. Oh, by the way, uh, Shinitama's like uh, she's kind of standing over there. That's because her like um, like everything in this game is kind of like a a person. So they just basically built her a person frame and uh, put her in the position to be hooked up in the middle. That's why she kind of looks gnarly there. Like, dying sometimes resets her animation. So she's just like, she's just grooving. Just chilling in the corner there.
There we go. So. Surprise, surprise, though. I actually... I didn't just shut Shinatama down. I set her free. Emergency override, Griffin Alpha Zero. Emergency override. No, no, stay back. This game's, this game's real bad about like killing characters you like, by the way. But the thing is, if you if you kill Griffin. Here, you actually skip this cutscene, so I'm exactly what you wanted. You know, so there's there's ways to save people just by skip by creative skipping of cutscenes, you can save some people. Anyway, we're just gonna walk away. It's up to you. I won't be the monster you thought I would be. Just remember what I am the woman you betrayed because you weren't big enough to take responsibility all right this, oh my gosh this is loading screen so now now we have become more powerful than anyone can possibly imagine we have our answers we're gonna go to the core of this we're gonna beat up our brother and stop his evil plan nothing can stop us because we have the power of mom jeans So there's, there's this whole area here. It's like helicopters, it's an air base, there's, all, there's a bunch of hidden weapons over there. We're gonna see none of that. We're just gonna, we're just gonna run along because we have temporary invisibility. And we're gonna sneak into the base and do some stuff. I see people in chat asking where to buy the game. Uh, this game is hard to get. Uh, you, it's actually not available on any of the online like storefronts. Uh, you can buy the PS2 version if you want. Uh, I don't recommend it. You can get, the only way to get the PC version, which I recommend is pretty much to like, uh, essentially, hold on, I'm just gonna jump off here. Oh, that was, ah, oh, there we go. Perfect, landed on the bike. Uh, like you can get it on eBay, uh, pretty much. Uh, the, you can also get the Anniversary Edition. Basically, there is a thriving community. If you go on speedrun.com for this game, there's a link to the Discord. There's a bunch of like really, really cool folks who are still keeping the game alive and doing all this cool stuff to it and incidentally made the Anniversary Edition, which let this game run on modern uh, PCs, which is important. This is like is a bunch of modding awesome. too. Yeah, it's real cool. Uh, but one of the, the main thing is I'm using the Deoden DLL, which lets this game run on modern machines. And I've set it, I've set all of the settings, the optional settings. It comes with like a bunch of really cool stuff, but I've set everything to be as vanilla as possible to, to like be as close to the original version of this game as is possible. Because, you know, it's, 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 it's how you speedrun things. I wanted to make sure that like we had the authentic experience. But there's so much to this. There's like some really, really cool stuff you can do with this game. But yeah, like just buy a CD on eBay, rip it, and there you go. And go get the DLL and you can run it. It will run on old machines, but you might need like, you know, when like a, an old version of Windows or something. It's, it's kind of tricky. Anyway, we just stole a truck. So we're just gonna like do some, we're just gonna truck along and get some of that hidden health. So I am sitting pretty in terms of health. By the way, oh, I need I need your gun, I'm sorry. Thank you. So, uh, we're, we're gonna be coming up on the final fight in a few minutes. Uh, basically, you remember what I did to the ninja? Uh, by saving Griffin, we will get a specific version of the final boss fight. And uh, I might have to retry a few times, but the basically the final version of that fight can be won in under 10 seconds if you're if you're lucky. So we're gonna try to get lucky because it's really cool to show. Excuse me. So uh, we're 
pretty much just gonna... Oh, there's a sniper there. Oh, dang it. It's really bad when that sniper decides to exist. A lot of the time, he'll just stay there and not actually do anything. But whoops. Oh, sorry. I accidentally uh, tabbed out of the game there. <laughs> That's bad. All good? All good? All good. It's all nice. We're all good. It's all no problems here. I'm just gonna let... Uh, Myself reheal over here. All right, here we go. And again, it's all when you're gonna take damage. It's always better to uh, power up beforehand because you're gonna take less damage. And once you're done, you're gonna be at full health. It's real good. All right, just gonna fall off here. So basically, uh, what we're revealing through all these things I'm like skipping rapidly through is um. Muro is knows he's got the chrysalis. He knows about okay. Well, yeah, it's gonna like make us into like super evolved version of ourselves. It's gonna help mankind survive the wasteland. So he decided to take over all the atmospheric conversion centers of the world, and he's gonna turn them in reverse and make them all turn the air super duper toxic very quickly. And that's gonna be bad. So basically, so that people can survive at all, he's gonna sell them. The uh, chrysalis technology, and basically you hear, all the world. You, fans. you heard it here first, folks. Eco terrorism is bad. Thank you, Sandra. Yep, and basically, so what Kanoko's going to do? Keep in mind, this is still her first day on the job. She decided, you know what? I'm gonna. Okay, I can't stop him, but what I can do is I can overload the entire system, and basically make all the atmospheric conversion centers of the world explode. And. That basically is going to buy us some time. So she plans, well, I'm just going to like release the chrysalis technology to the world, let all of humanity super evolve, and yeah, we're still going to live in a hellscape, but at least we're going to survive. So that's that's her plan. But you know, when, when it's your first day on the job, you do the best you can with what you got. So here we are. We've just uh, set everything to 9999. Now this big radar dish is going to make uh, make the world explode. But to save it, you know, explode the world to save it. That's that's what's important. And now, uh, I guess I guess we're done. I guess that's it. Good work, Kanoko. You saved the world ostensibly. You well you blew up the. You're gonna blow up the world, but it's to you know. To, it's better than the alternative, is what we're gonna say. All right, Muro. Time is gonna be coming up as soon as the. You know, see like the letterboxing. As soon as okay, we're gonna fight. As soon as the letterboxing comes in, and Muro dies, that is time. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it. It's. It can come pretty quick, but I will. I will say it just to be sure. Murrow's real mad. Alright, so let's try this. Nope, let's try again. Sometimes need a few tries for this life. Time. There it is. It's like, you know, you set up this whole, this whole thing. This whole takeover the world scheme, but you know it's it's there's there's no problem that a bunch of hell rockets can't solve. <laughs> well, GG, great job. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and uh, hopefully, you did it. yeah, the the world is exploding. All the all the uh, all the totalitarian cop headquarters are exploding, but you know responders are on there. They're doing their job. Oh, now we get the end cutscene.
When I blew the processors, I bought us some time, but at a horrible cost. The dead and the dying now line the streets, but it's impossible to deny the problem any longer. My father's work may prove to be the salvation of the afflicted after all. Mankind as we knew it is doomed. The chrysalis will change us all. Let's hope it's for the better. So that was Oni, and then it crashes to desktop. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 2001 PC game, what are you going to do? But yeah, that was Oni. I love it. It's great. It's the game that is the first game I, sp I started speedrunning. I'm so glad that I got to show it off here uh, for Frame Fatales and GDQ Hotfix. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Liz, for helping and uh, you know, helping everyone understand the magnitude of blowing up the world on your first day on the job. And Poutine. Yes, and Poutine. Thank you, Weapons, <laughs> and everyone in GDQ Hotfix for putting this together. I am super honored to be part of this. And oh, you know, thank you, everyone, who has decided to speed run a game and put it online, because you helped inspire me. And hopefully I can like, you know, uh, keep the ball rolling and inspire other folks, because it's really cool to just play a game you like and keep getting better at it because it empowers you to do other stuff. And there, sh there should be more of that out in the world. Thanks, everybody. Please take care. Mm, let's keep making wonderful things together. Well, thank you very much.